So if you do get into a crash, you probably aren't gonna suffer the indignity of having survived it. My name is Alan Galbraith and I am the head gasket at the uh, Concorde de la Mountains. It's a, a series of car shows that features the oddball, mundane, and truly awful of the automotive world. And it had its genesis with the 24 Hours of Lemons. Very good friend of mine, uh, Jay Lamb, came up with this idea to put $500 cars on a racetrack for 24 hours and uh, laugh at the mayhem that ensues. And uh, when he came up with this idea, he put the word out into the automotive sphere, a world of influence, and uh, word spread around. I got a hold of it, and at the time was road racing motorcycles. This sounded like a really good idea to me and some of my motorcycle racing friends because it's a expensive endeavor, and if you could, uh, if there's a way to go racing cheaply, we thought that'd be a lot of fun and. We also thought that uh, driving around in a full car with a cage and a harness and all that sounded a lot safer than uh, rocketing around the track on a, on a motorcycle. So we uh, found another friend that had a uh, impound yard, pulled one of the cars out from his impound yard and uh, did it up with Gulf livery. And it was a uh, Cutlass Supreme Brome. Ran on about four cylinders. If you kept out of the throttle, it ran on five. So uh, we figured we were set. We showed up at the racetrack, had an absolute ball doing it. But the problem with us was, as a team, since we were motorcycle racers, we were invincible in this car. So we drove like jerks. We ran into people, we pushed people off the road. We did just about anything you weren't supposed to do. And there weren't too many rules at the time, but we managed to break them all. And as a consequence, you get black flagged. You have to come into the pits and go to the punishment box, the penalty box, where Jay Lamb would have a one-way conversation with you and tell you about your horrible driving and uh, what you needed to do to redeem yourself, which was usually something silly. And I found myself there quite a bit talking with Jay and we became fast friends. Me, not so fast on the racetrack, but we became good friends. And one night over a few adult beverages, maybe more than a few adult beverages, I kind of came up with the idea of, hey, you know, you've really ruined the world of car racing. I'm a car show promoter. Why don't we do the same thing to car shows? So the idea of the Concours de la Mons was born. And I've been going to the Pebble Beach Concours for about, at the time, about 20 years. Hadn't missed a year the whole time. And I'd seen it grow from you know, when you couldn't get, you know, you could call the day before and get a room, you know, that day and you could get a room for one night at the hotels in the area to now hotels are booked years in advance and five night minimum and very expensive. So it gotten kind of stuffy and kind of self-important and become this big thing. And I thought, you know, that'd be a good target to let some of the air out of. So we floated this idea out to our uh, automotive journalist friends who like us are kind of snarky jerks. And I can say that because I'm an automotive journalist as well. And they loved the idea. They said, anything that takes a little bit of air out of that balloon, we're happy to be on board with. So word got out. I started getting applications to participate from all over the country. You know, you figure how many pacers and pintos and gremlins are there. Turns out there's quite a bit and some folks are very proud of them and want to come and participate. So we got signups, uh, we set the rules out. Some owners and some owners clubs don't have a sense of humor about their car. You shouldn't show up, this just isn't the show for you. We divide the cars up into country of origin, usually keep the Axis power cars on one side and the uh, Allied power cars on the other. If you have a car, have a story about it, like to tell it, can bring some bribes for the judges and bribes do make a difference. You know, food, alcohol, barbecue. Uh, we've had somebody uh, bake a cake in the shape of their car. It was a very good cake um, and that helped them win their class. So not a whole lot of rules. Uh, just as long as it's something kind of fun, weird, or you can feature something about it, you're welcome. Uh, we set the classes up. Uh, we came up with Rust Belt American Junk and Soul Sucking Japanese Appliance. Needlessly Complex Italian. You know, just anything we could do to kind of 
put a little jab into, into some of the sacrosanct ideas of car collecting and car shows. So we, you know, very popular idea. Entrance came in from all over. About a week before the show, I'm getting a few things done, finalizing a few aspects of it, and I get a phone call. Pick up the phone, hello. And let's just say it's an unnamed official at a unnamed concord that takes place in August in Monterey. And uh, they told me that and I said, oh, hi, how are you doing? And this person said, so tell me about the Concord de la Mons. I said, well, we're in no way making fun of your show. <laughs> and uh, told them a little bit about it and what we're doing. And, you know, it's just kind of a lighthearted lark, sort of fun, blah, blah, blah. And I said, so how did you hear about the show? And this person said, well, I was up at the transporters where our participants are unloading their cars. And one of our participants was unloading a Delahaye. And right behind it, they had a Crosley. And I knew that wasn't for our show, so I asked them where they were going, and they said the Concorde de Limones. And I said, oh, yeah, that's going to be in our most dangerous class. And there's this long pause. And I'm expecting the next words to be, well, here's the cease and desist order. And the person said, well, have fun with that. And we have ever since. And I think we had 30 some odd cars this last year. We had about 150 cars. We've added a rally now. There's the, uh, the Lemons Rally, which is just long and brutal. And it's not like these luxury rallies. You get nothing. You drive far too far during a day in just a horrible car. And you're probably not going to make it. Um, and that's part of the fun. We've, we've had uh, some, some fairly rare cars show up. Uh, we had a Ferrari 288 GTO enter into the needlessly complex Italian class. So it's not just bad cars. People that don't take their cars so seriously can also enter and enjoy it, just knowing that we're going to probably poke fun at them a little bit. Um, we've had an auto red bug, which is uh, basically a, a toboggan with a motor stuck on it. Um, just dangerous as all heck, and that was uh, actually in good competition with the Crosley for our most dangerous class one year. We've had a Voisson bi-scooter show up. Uh, Voisson, a storied uh, car manufacturer, French manufacturer from the 30s that made these beautiful, intricate, aviation-inspired uh, vehicles. And then after the war, there wasn't much left of the company, but they made these sans permis cars, which were little French cars that technically weren't cars, legally weren't. And it was just awful. I mean, it's a terrible car. It looks like somebody made it in their garage with a sheet metal brake. The steering column is a solid shaft of steel that points right at your throat. And the only redeeming feature to it is that the gas tank sits right above the exhaust manifold. So if you do get into a crash, you probably aren't going to suffer the indignity of having survived it. So I think in the past 10 years doing this, I've learned that People are passionate about their cars, whether it's a multi-million dollar car or something that some people would leave on the side of the road. There's a way to have fun with them. There's a way to enjoy them. You don't have to take it all so seriously. And as a matter of fact, we find that, you know, like the case of the Delahaye and the Crosley, we get people that are participating on a very high level in the auction world and the Concours world that seek out cars they can bring to the Concorde de Limones because they have more fun at that show than at the other shows because there's no pressure. It's just enjoy the car, tell a good story, have a few laughs, and you don't have to spend a million dollars on a car to have a good time with it. And we've actually gotten on the official, official calendar of events at a couple of Concours. We now do one uh, in Detroit with the uh, Concours of America there. This year will be our first year at uh, Mealy Island. Um, so we're basically ruining every major concours in the country. We also do an event in Australia, um, which is great fun. We had to add the class of cobbled together kangaroo carts for there. And every year it just keeps getting bigger and dumber, kind of like me.